Sir John Richard, was not a knight. His full name began with a Sir. His dad, though an American, was an Anglophile, who loved British monarchy and royalty. He traced his ancestry to some dukedom, in England. He named his newborn baby, Sir John Richard, in honor of one of his ancestors, with the same name. When Sir John Richard was a young boy, his name invited funny laughs at school, from other boys and girls. Sir John, they would call him mockingly, though there was nothing to be mocked at, as that was his baptized name. But they would say it in a manner, that seemed both scornful, and sarcastic. From childhood, Richard had been exposed to ridicule, and he had developed the fighting spirit. His sensitivity about his name, made him a keen observer of people, places and events. Richard loved software coding, and he joined a leading New York-based financial company, Rofer Toxic, as a programmer. Richard rose up in the ranks, by the dint of his hard work, to the position of vice president. Salary was good, life was good, and Richard loved his job. Life took a U-turn for Richard, when Rofer Toxic brought in Leslie Spencer as senior vice president. As is the norm, in corporate America, of acolytes following, when a bigwig moves, Leslie brought a mercurial character, Balasio Romansky, along with her, from her previous place of employment, Sara Paul Joes Incorporated. Balasio, in turn, brought his own acolyte, Kordak Rowinski. With the arrival of Balasio Romansky and Kordak Rowinski, trouble with a capital T, began at Rofer Toxic. To understand this better, one needs to go a decade back in time. Simbayam Corporation, was a leading producer of software and hardware. It was while working as a junior programmer at Simbayam, Balasio Romansky met his cash cow, Sean Verkalis. The two hit it from day one. Balasio was not great at coding. Program logic, and converting algorithms into software, was not his cup of tea. Pulling strings and leveraging his friendship with Sean, Balasio entered the world of application integration, which did not require much coding. The two of them declared themselves, integration experts. Balasio's performance at Sim Bam was below mark, and he was soon fired. But his friendship with Sean, survived the dismissal from Sim Bam. Balasio joined Sarapal Joes Incorporated, a retailer in Jacksonville, as a contractor, specializing in IT integration. Balasio reported to Leslie Spencer at Sarapal Joes Incorporated. Balasio noted Leslie to be a woman, who could easily trust people, and believe whatever they said. Balasio decided to put this trust to good use. He roped in Sean into his plan. The plan was simple. He had Sean incorporate a shell company in his name. Verkalis Incorporated was born. As the next step, Balasio fired all contractors, and wherever possible, full-time employees, and replace them with contractors of Verkalis Incorporated. Those contractors willing to join Verkalis Incorporated, were allowed to stay by Balasio. It did not take long for Sara Paul Joes Incorporated, to realize what was going on. The trigger was one of the vendors filing a lawsuit against Verkalis Incorporated, and Sara Paul Joes Incorporated getting a wind of it. Balasio, Leslie, and Kordik, were fired, in what became a Sara Paul Joes legend, as a daylight coup. All three of them had their access cards removed at the parking lot, and driven to the gate by security. True to the saying that there is a sucker born every minute, Rofer Toxic, a New York-based financial company, was willing to take the three in the order, Leslie Balasio Kordik. Balasio, who had sharpened his skills at Sara Paul Joes Incorporated, decided to put the Sara Paul Joes model in practice again, this time at Rofer Toxic. This pitted him directly against Sir John Richard, Richard realized that Rofer Toxic had brought in a con, after a few minutes of conversation, in their very first meeting. After a month or two, Richard noticed contractors being fired, in droves from Rofer Toxic. Full-time employees were reporting getting harassed by Balasio. A keen observer of people, places and events, Richard noted, that from having a conference room filled with direct reports, when he joined, Balasio had literally emptied the room, by getting rid of all contractors, in batches. New faces, unknown faces, were trickling in, one by one, the vendor was Verkalis Incorporated, or companies that supplied personnel to Verkalis. 
Balasio Romanski's Sarapaljo's business model was in full swing at Rofer Toxic. Richard decided to dig about Balasio. A simple Google search told Richard that there were court cases pending against Balasio in various Florida courts. Balasio was even named along with Vercalis Incorporated as witness in a major court case in Florida. Sir Richard noted that Balasio was identifying contractors at employees and preparing a hit list. He heard from Office Grapevine that Balasio was doing all the backroom maneuvering. Top management was being fed with stories of contractors and employees performing poorly. They were painted as being outright incompetent. It was a typical Balasio Sarapal Joe's model, and it was working like a well-oiled machine at Rofer Toxic. Richard could take it no more. Richard could not get work done due to high employee contractor attrition rate in a company that had gone fully agile. He recalled the bedtime stories his dad narrated about the bravery of his ancestor in England. His ancestor had defeated William Wallace, King of Scotland, in the epic battle at Falkirk on 22nd July, 1298, operating under the command of King Edward I of England. The stories of his bravery spurred Sir Richard to gather courage to confront Balasio and question his management style. Questioning Balasio was the last thing any employee or contractor could do and escape unhurt. The man was a corporate sociopath. Anyone standing in the way would be removed. Balasio was not the one to care for his employer. Good or bad employee did not matter to him. All he cared was to see how much he could leverage his position to accumulate more greenbacks. This was 2015, and Sir John Richard was no knight in shining armor, but a t-shirt wearing computer programmer. Three weeks later, on a Monday morning, Sir John Richard was called for a skip-level meeting with Balasio's boss, Leslie. She informed him that she had to let Richard go because of performance issues. Sir John Richard knew Balasio had done his homework perfectly well. Performance was Balasio's deadly weapon. He threw at anyone whom he wanted to be fired at his whim. Even Florida court systems were aware of it. Sir John Richard resolved to give his parting short. He informed Rofer Toxics Human Resources about Balasio Sarapaljo's model in detail. A few months later, the trio of Leslie Balasio Cordic were let go. They had arrived together and were also dismissed together. Sir John Richard soon joined another organization. Balasio became history as far as his life was concerned. A few years rolled by, one fine day, while having his lunch in the break room, Sir John scanned the local newspaper lying on the table. Sir John noticed a headline tucked in an innocuous corner of the newspaper. It read, "Man arrested in FBI sting operation." Curious, Sir John began to read. He ended up choking his food after reading the second line of the news report. The man arrested was Balasio Romanski. The newspaper reported that Balasio had tried to make money from federal government contracts. His shenanigans were discovered sooner, and the agency went public with the news, unlike private companies, which hushed things up, fearing a stock market hit. Sir John Richard knew exactly what Balasio may have done at his employer's place, a federal government agency of all places. Sir John Richard shook his head in disbelief. He recalled his grandma's oft-repeated saying that no thief can escape for long. That was her equivalent to a leopard never sheds its spots. Sir John Richard wondered why some men behave the way they do. They have everything in life, and everything is going their way. But yet, they want that extra dough. But at what cost? This is a question for which neither Sir John nor anyone else can find an appropriate answer. Can you? If so, please share in comments below.